What's up Sledheads? Guard here. Today's video is going to be covering snaking and submarining in Sledstorm. So in Sledstorm and the majority of racing games out there, your vehicle will lose speed whenever you go off jumps because that's just how physics works. So in speedrun sense, the less time you spend in the air, the more time you save on the ground. This aspect has shaped the routing for every track to what it is to this day. So taking the routes with the least amount of jumps to save time, and when you do have to go off jumps, you try to go off the lowest portions. But there is a technique that pushes it even further, snaking. Snaking is done by leaning your sled forward at just the right time before a jump to slightly go into the ground so that your sled leaves the jump at a lower angle, thus giving you less air time. Now you may say, oh, it only saves a couple of milliseconds, why bother? Well, think about how many jumps there are in this game. Lots. And if you manage to use snaking properly on each one, that's a lot of time saved to be made. It's best to use in areas where you would be coming down from a jump and you'd land right in front of another small jump. If you don't adjust your sled on impact, you will bounce off that second jump. But with snaking, you can lean forward right before impact and slither on through with ease. Snaking can also be used around some turns, like the one you just saw at Super Snowcross 1, and this one at the end of Perilous Pass. Again, first example is without snaking. And this one is with snaking. As you can see, you can make the turn much sharper, saving you a decent amount of time. Now, snaking is not going to work for every jump. Generally, the larger the jump, the more likely you will be bonked backwards from the backside polygon. This is called getting clipped it could be just as bad as getting stunned. For those larger jumps, you need to keep your sled parallel with the incline, and right as you go off, you can hold forward to nosedive, then lean back to land flat. But don't dive too far, or you may turn into a submarine. Submarining, for the most part, is seen as a bad thing. It tends to happen when you land from a very large jump with your sled leaning forward, sending you into the ground, and often results in hitting some collision bouncing you backwards. Not good, of course. There's only one area so far that submarining is useful. On Perilous Pass, when you come down from the last jump before crossing the finish line, you land right on top of another jump that will pop you way up into the air. But with submarining, you can nosedive just the right time before landing and clip right through the top of the jump to the other side. For all of the other submarines that I managed to pull off, they had no way in saving time. For like real submarines, they're slow to get going and hard to control. There might be one or two out there that I have overlooked, but for now, submarining is just a fun little glitch to mess around with casually. That's going to be all for this video. There are so many more good examples of places to use snaking that I didn't show in the video. I just wanted to get the uh, concept across for you guys clearly so you guys can go find them all yourself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the slopes. Peace.